You will have lots of chances to ask questions, but this is my intro video, the first of the fall semester, 2024, for this morning session. And we're gonna go to our class in Canvas. This is for both digital imaging and for digital media, my morning class, Monday, Wednesday. And we are going to scroll for the first time, because we're looking at our course outline, right? beyond just the orientation exercises. And we're gonna start our first exercise, exercise number one. It's worth two points. It's largely pass fail. Zero if you don't turn anything in. One if you turn something in, but it doesn't meet all the requirements yet. Two points if you turn something in and it meets all the requirements. So where do we get to the course content? You could use modules on the side it's very dry. It shows what's contained. You can see that exercise one is in that module, unit two. My preferred way and the way I've designed the course is so that you go to this animated icon here for unit modules. And we go to the image mining module, unit two. This introduces us to the projects required for this module. And there's only one project required. You can see them. Each page is up here. This first page, I'll always have an introduction to the assignment, what you're expected to learn, how you will learn it. But largely, this page is not very useful to us in the class itself. It's useful to students coming to this assignment on their own and having to be reminded what it's about, what it's for. So think of it as a landing page, an intro page. The next page on exercises and assignments, I'll have past student examples. So we call this exercise the line art jumble. And it's to introduce us to compositing. And it uses our skills that we just practiced with digital mining, finding good high resolution pixel reference, and then compositing it together into an original image. It is going to be other people's pixels, what I call OPP, which means it's copyrighted. So in order to make it something that we can own for ourselves, we have to fully transform it into original work product. And we'll be talking a lot more about that through the class. But if you meet all the requirements of this, you can be reasonably confident that yours is not a derivative work. It will be a transformative work. If you ever want to see more examples, you can click on the Imgur link. This is where you'll put your final portfolios at the end of the semester. And if you're not able to, to see them, actually, you should be able to see them without even signing in. But our account information is under links. We'll get there later. So you'll add these, but you won't add them until the end of the semester. So these are projects that students were proud enough of from exercise one to include in their final portfolio. And you can see all of them are compositing together different types of line art. Here we have Transformers. Here we have Winnie the Pooh. Here we have Looney Tunes. Here we have SpongeBob. So it's always good to, to choose something you like. Here are some of my past instructor examples. This one was He-Man, for instance. So you'll notice that He-Man has a very different kind of line quality than clip art, which is what this is taken from, or SpongeBob, for instance. So it's nice to, to take reference from a similar family of line quality, like Disney cartoons. Disney has a very particular line style. It's called the Disney style. So that's just for past examples. And then, just like I'm recording right now, if you want to see past recordings of this assignment or any other assignment, this is our public YouTube page, NLC Arts Lab. And if you navigate through the playlist, which I always recommend instead of the individual videos, because the individual videos can look kind of chaotic, the playlists are all labeled for the assignment. So if we scroll down to where we see exercise one, this would be the beginning of the spring semester for exercise one. And we can see the full playlist. And if we skip to the end. All right, in the last 
we can see how we have the black line art and then I'll show some optional ways at the end. This is just kind of extras that we can finish it off with color. But we have to create it as a black line art jumble first. So that could be a good way to review or if you want to look ahead to what we'll be doing in future classes, you can always look at those playlists. This will be the first video of this semester's playlist, right? And then I'll get to the actual assignment where it, it gives you directions, gives you professional examples, and it will even give you step-by-step -step instructions for these exercises. Our assignments get too complicated to be able to do this, but let's say you missed today's class, you didn't know about the YouTube channel, just by going through this, you should be able to put something together and, and demonstrate the basic skill of compositing. So in this example, I limit the, uh, the subjects that you're able to use as being based on a banned book from our NLC library. But for this semester, I'm trying out this idea of a favorite children's book, a favorite cartoon, whatever you put on your question of the day zero. What I put was this, character, this book, Charlie Parker played Bebop. I think it's by Chris Roshka. And in order to do image mining, we don't want to just do a regular Google search, which shows us everything. We want to do an image search. So Google images, you can always just click or search Google images. And you don't need to be logged into Google to use this. And then if I search Charlie Parker played Bebop, I will get all the image results. Now, mining is all about finding high quality materials. High quality materials for raster pixel based images, which are what we're using, need to be at least a thousand by a thousand pixels large. So the first thing I do is click on tools. I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see. Tools. Under tools, I have to scroll past all the different categories and go to size. That's the first way I can modify my search tool. And I want to search only large files. Google defines large files as files that are at least a thousand by a thousand pixels. Or really it just limits it to things that are at least a thousand pixels or larger in one dimension. So these images that I'm looking at, these are what are called thumbnail images. So if I just say, okay, I want to save this image, that would give me a low quality image. And you'll notice it will have a weird name too. So if I download that to my desktop, and then you're going to see my really crazy desktop, and I open it up, you're going to see that it's tiny. And if I zoom in on it, you're going to see how it's distorted. Because this is not a thousand by a thousand pixels. This image your thumbnail, your average Google thumbnail is actually, let's go to size here. It's actually, let's see it in pixel dimensions, about 225 by 225 pixels. So well less than a thousand by a thousand, even though it's coming from something that is from a large search. So how do I get to the actual image? I have to click on it. I have to look closer. And when I look closer, I can hover over it with my screen and I can see that it is a thousand by a thousand pixels. And then to actually look at it closer, I right click and I say open image and new tab. So I can see the image on its own and I can see it at full resolution. And basically any image that's good enough to use for this class is going to fill a computer screen. If it's smaller than a full computer screen, it's not large enough to print. And one of our learning outcomes is to learn how to make things print quality. So the problem with this image is it has a lot of color in it, right? But I'm going to save it anyway because I don't know that I'm going to find any just black and white images. So how would I search for that? This next tool category is color. 
and I can say only black and white images. And then it gives me a ton of photographs of Charlie Parker, which aren't in the children's book, right? So then I can go to type and I can say, instead of photography or any type of art, I want line drawings. And now I'm gonna get some interesting line drawings that include jazz musicians like Charlie Parker. Whether they come from an Instagram account, open the image in a new tab, look at it more closely. Ah, so this is a good example of an image that is over a thousand by a thousand pixels, but it is a low quality image, right? Because when I look at it, I can see that it, it was already forced up. So yes, it is that many pixels, but they are not good quality pixels. So I don't want to use that. That's what's called a noisy or distorted image. I might think, oh, this one could be fun to use. And it's 2,700 by two, uh, 2,200 pixels. So I'm going to open the image in a new tab and make sure that they're not terrible pixels. Zoom in on it. No, those look pretty good. So then I'm going to right click, save image as, always save to the desktop. And then confirm with function key F11 that it is on the desktop. So now I've got these images. Then you close those tabs, you go back to your search. It might be fun to do something with music notes. So I can take this one, even though there's gray in this image, it looks like it's large enough. Open the image in the new tab. Look how high quality that is, very nice. Those are actually created with vectors. but this is a raster image that was just created using vectors. And then you have a character from Cowboy Bebop. That's fun. Some fan art here. Open image in new tab. It's not very black and it's pretty sketchy, but it is high quality. It's just a high quality scan of a pencil sketch. So I'm trying to show you like a lot of diverse types of line art that we can still use but it's easiest if you can use line art that, that has a similar quality to it. And line art is based on lines, right? Even though this, these lines are used as hatching to look like shade, this is all just black line. I'm going to go ahead and save that one. And that's Charlie Parker right there. And this is probably Dizzy Gillespie for you jazz aficionados. Now, I'm not going to use this one, even if it is high quality, just because I don't like this line quality as much. Right? So you are curating. And I'm not going to use this one, even though it's black and white, because this is not what's considered line art. Whoops. That's what happens when you just click on it instead of right click, so open image and new tab. You just go to the website. So right click, open image and new tab. So this is interesting. And it's black and white, but it's not line based, right? This is what's called a full bleed illustration. This is what logo design is, but it won't composite well with other lines because it's just big shapes of black that, that block everything else out. So that would be a, a different kind of project. So now let me check my desktop. I've got one that's bad, <laughs> right? That's tiny. And so I'm going to show you what you do when you want to delete something. We're never going to actually delete anything in this class because the risk is too high on these shared computers that you'll delete someone's work that they want. So instead, when you don't want something on your desktop and you don't want to use it anymore, you're going to drag it to your downloads folder. It's the folder on your computers that's closest to the trash can. If you drag things to the trash can, I'll forgive you. I will not forgive you for ever emptying the trash can. Does that make sense? Because that actually wipes it from the computer. And the only people that get to wipe the trash can is the IT department, right. which they do sporadically you know, through the semester. And if your trash can is full, I will clean that up as I'm setting up your computers, hopefully before next week. So I'm just putting it in my downloads and then it's no longer on my desktop. I don't need to worry about it. So I have one, two, three, four, five images I want to use. One of them is in color. 
And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create my first folder. So how do you create a folder on a Mac? 